both Congress and BJP manifestos are talking of governance for the city at a regional level than at the city level. Strangely, only AAP has mentioned that they will implement uh, peripheral ring road. Congress seems to have not done any course correction after they had to scrap the steel flyover project. About problems in the city, the first thing that they mentioned is probably traffic. BJP has proposed a multimodal transport hub on the lines of New York's Concord. South Bangalore is not served by any railway infrastructure. Free power, free travel for women and buses, or a New York-like transport hub. What does Bengaluru really want? Let's look at the manifestos of political parties and see what they think Bengaluru needs and wants. So, Aditya, uh, we will start with how all three parties, um, which have significant measures mentioned for Bengaluru, AAP, BJP and the Congress, have some proposals uh, in connection with governance for Bengaluru and how it should be different. Though JDS won two seats in 2018 in the city and it presently holds one seat, its manifesto has very little dedicated for Bengaluru, whereas Congress, BJP and AAP manifestos have separate portions for Bengaluru. So interestingly, both Congress and BJP manifestos are talking of governance for the city at a regional level than at the city level. So while BJP proposes a state capital region uh, modeled on national capital region of Delhi and Congress has something similar, it says uh, mega Bengaluru region. So both the BJP and Congress proposes a MPC at the regional level, planning at the regional level, at the BMRDA level. Uh, whereas AAP actually also talks of governance at a regional level through MPC, but it says for the metropolitan region, which essentially is Bangalore urban and Bangalore rural districts. But there is no clarity in Congress and BJP manifestos as to what is the region. That is one thing. So, and Congress has a proposal to bring in a new law for BBMP governance where all the parastatals like BDA, BWSSB, BESCOM, BMTC, all those will be put under one agency. So, this has been a long-standing demand of many urban governance experts that ideally these all these agencies should be uh, under BBMP. So, but the Congress manifesto has no clarity whether this one agency will be a new agency manned by officials or whether it will be the BBMP where there is political accountability. The problem with all these parastatals is that there is no accountability structure to hold them accountable. Or coordination. Or coordination. Yeah. So, we don't know whether what Congress has in mind, whether it is a new agency, another mega parastatal or it will be under the BBMP. Right. So, these are the two major things that are there, but if there is a new law again, then it may again delay BBMP elections. That is the catch. Now, the BBMP has often been a cash-strapped entity, heavily dependent on the state government for funds. Do the manifestos talk about granting it financial stability? Uh, we know that there is one proposal to abolish property tax, for example. How does all of this work? BJP manifesto doesn't talk much about financial autonomy for BBMP, but Congress says that we will make BBMP more financially autonomous, but doesn't explain how it will be done. But whereas AAP manifesto has very clear proposals as to how it will be done. So they have said that like there is a central uh, for, uh, central government to state government devolution of taxes, they will implement devolution of taxes from the state government to the municipal bodies. Mm -hmm. So every uh, municipal body will get 5% of the uh, taxes collected in that city. Right. So, because that will be, AAP says that that will be more than what they are, uh, these municipalities are collecting in property tax, they will abolish property tax, which is almost like a major uh, boon for the property owners in any city. Right. So, they are saying 5% of uh, state taxes collected in that city will be dev devolved to these city municipalities and therefore there is no need of property tax. And AAP manifesto further goes one step down on decentralization and it says every ward budget mm -hmm. of that 20% will be given to the ward committee for its own discretion. Right. So this is like a four step central government to state government, state government to municipality and from municipality to the ward level also they are proposing devolution of funds. It's a decentralization that I think people have also asked for. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, only AAP, AAP has this kind of proposal and no, the other two parties don't have. Okay. 
in terms of infrastructure we also see projects like flyovers being mentioned which hasn't gone down too well with the uh, citizen groups uh, what has each party promised so apart from mobility uh, which all parties have dwelt more on the main thing uh, on infrastructure is only in congress manifesto which promises to revive the old uh, 110 kilometers long elevated corridor project network actually not to south and southeast and also they have promised to again revive one project that was proposed in a ppp model and which did not take off and there was a lot of uh, opposition to it that was a network of underground tunnel roads in the central business district to decongest bangalore this project was mooted actually when uh, george was the bangalore minister yeah. and this has been included in the manifesto and this already there is some opposition to these proposals in congress manifesto and this is likely to if they come to power and try to implement it it is likely to raise hackles again and congress seems to have not done any course correction after they had to scrap the steel flyover project yeah. that is much yes yes yeah. and they had to scrap that project so after that also they have included two major projects which are likely to raise hackles from citizen groups in the city and bjp doesn't have anything much on infrastructure like this and uh, our, most of the infrastructure proposals are on the mobility front what about existing projects um, do any of the political parties mention any long pending existing projects that they want to implement say on a larger scale or sooner strangely only aap has mentioned that they will implement uh, peripheral ring road and none of the other parties have actually mentioned prr which is a very long pending project and all parties have and all governments previous governments have also been working on that project neither bjp nor congress manifestos actually have a mention of prr but uh, congress manifesto has a uh, i don't know whether it is feasible or not but they have said within one year of coming to par they will complete all the l- pending metro works okay. all the pending phases in one year and they will take a phase 3 and phase 4 and try to complete it within the next 5 years okay. that is there in congress manifesto mm-hmm. these are the two main things on long pending projects so if there's one thing that bengaluru is infamous for it's obviously its traffic chaos what have political parties proposed to resolve this really long pending issue because this is something that constantly comes up when you ask citizens from any part of the city um about problems in the city the first thing that they mention is probably traffic what have parties said about this if you see the manifestos of all three political parties a majority of proposals are regarding mobility and thereby by extension trying to fix the traffic mess mm-hmm. in the city so bjp has proposed a multimodal transport hub on the lines of new york's concord in bengaluru and they have also proposed a universal travel card and a ticket booking app which is like a digital infrastructure for this multimodal transport hub and they have also proposed one ai powered app which will offer uh, smart traffic solutions and suggestions for commuters on the road this is what bjp has proposed so aam aadmi party has interestingly proposed to build a railway network in south bengaluru mm. uh, till now we, as we know that south bengaluru is not served by any railway infrastructure yeah. till now so they have proposed for the first time to build a railway network in south bengaluru and they have also proposed to build a second airport for the city between bengaluru and mysuru okay. between the two cities because the airport the present airport is very far off sure. to in one corner so these are the major uh, proposals for mobility apart from buses and other public transport issues despite the popularity of the metro a bulk of uh, public transport users in bengaluru still depend on bmtc what have parties said about either augmenting their services or improving efficiency of the bmtc there has always been a demand to increase the fleet size of bmtc because the current fleet size is felt insufficient well bjp doesn't mention anything about bmtc directly congress uh, promises to increase the fleet size of bmtc to 10000 and also a commitment to convert half the fleet size into electric buses in the next 2 years and aam aadmi party has promised to increase the fleet size of bmtc to 12000 so these are the two major things about bmtc directly and apart from on the fleet size and aam aadmi party has promised bus lanes on all big 10 routes and also on outer ring road yeah. there is no mention of uh, bus priority lanes on 
in the other uh, two manifestos okay there's also mention of free travel for women yes both uh, congress and aam aadmi party have promised free travel for women not just in bftc but all acro- across the state all rtc buses all rtc buses okay. across the state okay. which applies to bmtc as well right. so what will it be an underground tunnel network under the cbd an ai powered app to solve bengaluru's notorious traffic bottlenecks or abolition of property tax these are some eye catching ideas that have come out of manifestos of the three major political parties that are competing in bengaluru it remains to be seen how feasible they are and how they'll be implemented if and when either party comes to power until then thank you